Hello everybody. Now let us study another emerging technology in food processing uh, that is supercritical fluid extraction. This topic will also be taken in two parts. In the part one today, we will discuss about the principles of the process and technological aspects including the systems available for supercritical fluid extraction. In the part 2, we will study the application of this technology in food processing. There is a great demand and in fact need is felt for the development of green technology. Particularly in the food processing from the ancient time and time immemorial this uh, extraction and isolation of uh, natural products from various sources has been done by using large amount of uh, organic solvent or these processes uh, generate accordingly large amount of organic waste. These industrial solvents which are generally used traditionally for the extraction processes, many of them are hazardous to human health and increasing concern about the environment pollution and the other such factors are undesirable effects of these organic solvents. Let us feel the need of green chemistry. Also, the structure regulations in the use of industrial solvents have increased the demand of green technology like supercritical fluid extraction. Supercritical fluid extraction method uses clean, safe, inexpensive, non flammable, non toxic and environment friendly solvents. Also the energy costs are lower in this process when compared to that of the traditional solvent extraction processes. So, the first thing comes in our mind what is supercritical fluid extraction? So, what is this process about? So, this process that is supercritical fluid extraction is the process of separating one component from another using a supercritical fluid as the extraction solvent. Okay. As you can see here in this flow diagram that the material from which the component to be extracted is placed in some vessel where the supercritical fluid is introduced in the vessel under certain conditions right and under these conditions the fluid supercritical fluid extracts those materials or those components from those materials and then finally, it is uh, separated using appropriate methods that is the extracted materials is obtained in the collection vessel. This aspect okay, in further we will elaborate little in more detail when we study when we discuss the technological aspects of the process. So, similarly what is now supercritical fluid after the supercritical extraction the supercritical fluid. So, what is supercritical fluid and in this regard you can see in this way there is a concept that is a critical point. There is critical point is the highest temperature and pressure 
above which a material can exist in vapor liquid equilibrium. Okay. You can see here in this uh, diagram, phase diagram, that is this is the triple point, this line that is this uh, x axis is the temperature and y axis is the pressure. So, maybe above this temperature and pressure on this line, the material is solid, but if the temperature and pressure is increased beyond this, so in on this line, the solid material may get converted into liquid. Further increase in the pressure and temperature, that is in the critical point, if you increase the temperature and pressure beyond the critical point, then this uh, liquid will be converted into some sort of is, is its nature and this is called supercritical region or it becomes a supercritical fluid and as I told you that the material exists in a equilibrium between vapor and liquid. So, supercritical fluid is single homogeneous fluid formed at the temperature and pressure above critical point. These have the properties intermediate to liquid and gas, like they have the properties of liquid as far as their weight etcetera is concerned, they are heavy like liquid, but they have the penetration power of the gas. Okay. For the production of the supercritical fluid, either the material temperature can be increased above that region or the material pressure can be brought to the desired level either by compressing or by some other methods. So, important thing is that it has to come that is like in this case above this okay, that is the critical temperature and pressure is to be maintained. In this slide I have uh, tried to show you that a comparison between the physical properties of gas, liquid and supercritical fluid. The physical important physical properties like density, dynamic viscosity, kinematic viscosity, thermal conductivity, diffusion coefficient and surface tension. And as I told you that they the supercritical fluid like you can see in the data that this is for the supercritical fluid. So, and the values if you compare that they have the properties intermediate to those of the liquid and the gaseous state and accordingly sometimes this is SCFs are also known as are called as compressible liquid or dense gases. They have higher solvent power and this high solvent power of these supercritical fluids is mainly due to their liquid like density that is their density is much 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 higher that is 100 to 1000 times greater than gases and they have excellent transport properties and this excellent transport property is owing to the gas like viscosity which is 10 to 100 times less than the liquid and diffusivity is also better and the in fact, the, the gas like viscosity diffusivity together with the zero surface tension. This contribute to the transport properties of these gases and rather they improve the transport they have the excellent transport properties. So, different uh, supercritical fluids and their critical pressure and uh, temperature above which they become super they come in supercritical states is shown in this table you can see the data, but that two supercritical that is which is indicated by red is worth seeing that is the carbon dioxide it has a critical temperature 304.1 degree Kelvin and critical pressure 
73.8 bar. So, the in fact, the temperature requirement is less here and the water has a critical temperature 643 sorry 647.3 degree Kelvin and 221.2 bar pressure. So, the most commonly supercritical fluid used in the food industry is the carbon dioxide. Its properties that is it has the properties like it is inert, it is inexpensive, easily available, orderless and tasteless, environment friendly, there is no solvent residue in the food after the extraction, it is suitable for thermoliable natural products, low energy inputs, good solvent for non-polar substances. So, these are the good desirable characteristics of the supercritical carbon dioxide which make it as a it as a very good uh, solvent for making or for use in food processing industries. Water you can see you can compare the data it becomes another good equally good solvent, but the here in this table just the data only of carbon dioxide and uh, water has been shown. So, the critical temperature you can see in the degree Celsius in this figure the water has 31.1 degree Celsius and this uh, pressure 73 point means that is the, the carbon dioxide above a temperature of 31.1 degree Celsius and a pressure of 73.8 bar it will behave like a supercritical fluid and its critical volume at this stage becomes 73.9 liter per k mole. Whereas, the water which is again as far as its uh, properties are concerned it may be also considered as a good solvent it is inert and other characteristics are there. But here you see that both the temperature and pressure required to bring it in supercritical stage are compared to very very high. The temperature in fact is 374 degree Celsius and the pressure accordingly is 221 bar and under these conditions its critical volume is also less that is 57.1. So, it in fact from the practical application point of view the use of water as a supercritical fluid rather becomes impractical or infeasible. Uh, that is why it is not used and the carbon dioxide its temperature and pressure it can be easily achieved and it can be easily converted into. And this is the pictorial that is diagram how the state changes when the liquid carbon dioxide is converted into by increasing the temperature and pressure is brought into the supercritical fluid. So, it is a nature or a state is shown here in this. So, let us before we come to the process uh, application technological let us uh, briefly understand the properties of the supercritical fluid how these properties are actually the different from the normal supercritical or normal carbon dioxide or liquid carbon dioxide because that becomes an important consideration in the extraction processes and designing uh, extraction process uh, parameters and optimizing the conditions and so on. Okay. So, as I told you that these supercritical fluids they behave as a dense gas occupying all available volume as a single phase, but they cannot be condensed as liquid by increasing the pressure. The densities of the supercritical fluids depend on temperature and pressure varying in the range of maybe 400 to 700 kg per cubic meter and which is significantly lower than the density of the liquid. Okay. Liquid you can say normally that is they have the density of the 1000 kg per cubic meter. So, this significantly lower density of the supercritical carbon dioxide is an important advantage in the extraction processes. Also, the transport properties of the supercritical fluids are those between the liquids and gases. 
viscosity of supercritical carbon dioxide is about 0.5 MPa per second milli Pascal per second and which is significantly lower than the viscosity of the hexane. Even the molecular diffusivity of supercritical fluid carbon dioxide at 40 degree Celsius is about one order of magnitude higher than that of the diffusivity in the liquid state. And in fact, viscosity and diffusivity their multiplication are constant. So, this provides a good so makes that these properties are particularly transport properties, density, viscosity, etcetera, it make is useful in the supercritical. So, that is the favorable transport properties that is a are desirable in extraction operations like low viscosity facilitate the penetration of supercritical fluid into the particulate beds and it reduce the power requirement in transferring the fluids through the system. Higher diffusivity increases the mass transfer and approaches to the equilibrium means which it results in that is the higher diffusivity of the SCF uh, gives higher extraction efficiency in the processes and the phase equilibrium bit between the SCF and the food component that is the equilibrium between SCF solvent and food component to be extracted are required for quantitative analysis of the extraction processes that is how when under which conditions what are the various factors which influence and how the phase equilibria can be maintained between this and because this is also important as far as the extraction yield and extraction efficiency of the process is concerned. Another important property as I told you the solubility that is the solvent power of the supercritical fluid depends on its structure its polarity as well as its density. Initial stages of SCF extraction are governed by the distribution coefficient of the solute between the dense phase and the sample matrix. Therefore, it is controlled by the solubility. So, solubility parameters of a dense gas can be estimated by these equations. Okay where rho by rho liquid is the ratio of the density of the dense gas to that of the liquid at its boiling point and the PC obviously is the critical temperature. So, from this one can get the solubility parameter of the dense gas from these equations and the equilibrium because this is again important equilibrium is expressed by the solubility of the component at a given temperature and pressure and this is usually determined by the experimental methods that is for particular product for particular depending upon the material characteristic etcetera what are the parameters pressure temperature and other things what are required so that is how to be experimentally determined but as far as the SCF CO2 is concerned and it is usefulness in food processing operations. The following that is the rule which I have listed here uh, they apply and what are those? There are three major points that is the number one solubility of low molecular weight and low polarity organic compounds like carbohydrates, alcohols, carboxylic acid, esters, aldehyde etcetera is very high in SCF CO2 means there is a complete miscibility. On the other hand the other important uh, rule which governs the process is the macromolecules and highly polar molecules like sugar, starch, protein, salt etcetera are not soluble. So, means that is these materials that is which I have shown in the first uh, that they can be easily extracted and they are completely miscible, but the other macromolecules these cannot be. So, 
in the food these components macromolecules remain intact in the food, but other bioactive such as polar components and low polar component low molecular weight components can be easily extracted. Also the solubility of some insoluble components of course, can be increased by the addition of some co-solvents or entrainers such as ethanol, acetone etcetera. Like for example, the solubility of beta carotene is increased to a great extent by using a mixture of carbon dioxide that is supercritical carbon dioxide in ethyl acetate like ethyl acetate here is used as a co-solvent. So, the co-solvent that I have seen in the last slide that they have important effect sometimes they improve the efficiency of the process, they increase the extractability of a particular compound. So, accordingly a co-solvent or entrainer actually they are normally that is the those which are used they are organic substances which have volatility intermediate to supercritical fluid solvent and the solute to be extracted. And generally it is added in a small concentration may be 1 to 5 molecular percentage right and a small amount of co-solvent increases the ability of a supercritical carbon dioxide to dissolve polar compound without significantly changing its density and compressibility. That is its solubilization power extractability is improved, but other characteristics are not disturbed. So, co-solvent mixed with SCF solvent is, is super critical that is the important thing that is it the mixture has also to come under the super critical state that is means that is the may be that is individually solvent and co-solvent may be having different critical pressure and temperature to come into the super critical state. But here mind it when the co-solvent is mixed in the CF. So, may be there may be certain change in the temperature. So, there it should be it will be supercritical in state at the mixture when the mixture or pressure is above the mixture critical pressure and the temperature is above its mixture critical temperature. And the common type of co-solvents used or entrainers used are methanol, ethanol, acetone, alpropanols, etcetera. So, in this slide again that is this are these data are taken from the literature. So, different co-solvents their characteristics like what is the critical temperature, critical pressure, molecular mass, dialectic constant, polarity index etcetera all those things the data are given here in this table and they become useful consideration from this it becomes easy to select a proper co-solvent which is suitable for extraction of a particular material in a particular process. Now, we come towards the other equipment part and its process part of the things like in a supercritical fluid extraction system that is what are the different components. Okay. You can see here in this figure that is number 1 that is the system should have one carbon dioxide supply source all right that is CO2 or SCF source means that is the either in the carbon dioxide cylinder or some other cell that is you should have a carbon dioxide source and then a chiller unit. Then a co-solvent or modifier pump of course, it is optional that is if required in the process it may not be completely necessary. Okay. Then a pump is needed to pressurize the gas and oven containing the extraction vessel that is where the actually material is put all right that is the vessel extraction vessel. So, in this the material and carbon dioxide come in contact then a restrictor that is to maintain high pressure in the extraction line and then finally, the uh, a separator it comes to through a separator all right and then which normally works under a lower pressure and finally, that is the material is 
collector that is extracted material is collected. So, it has some uh, extract collection collecting vessel and accordingly as in case of any other uh, system that is the necessary instrumentation for controlling and maintaining the pressure, temperature that is flow and other things are obviously they are provided even uh, controller indicators and etcetera accessories. So, regarding operating principle of the supercritical fluid extractor, it can operate in static mode, dynamic mode or in a combination mode. The process can be made batch or continuous. In the static mode, there is the supercritical fluid is circulated in the extraction vessel for a certain period of time after which it is a passed through followed to its release through the restrictor to the trapping vessel. Whereas, in the dynamic mode of extraction there is a continuous flow of SCF that is the SCF is allowed to flow continuously through the sample in the extraction vessel and go out to the restrictor to the trapping vessel. And sometime also there are combination systems that were conduction of static extraction for some time followed by a dynamic extraction. So, combination is the mixture of a combination of both static as well as dynamic. So, all these types of systems are available and the systems for batch operation for continuous operation. So, this it is a that is a just process flow chart for any that is the general supercritical fluid extraction process. So, here there is the feed the introduction in the extraction vessel that is by appropriate assembly appropriate process for the large scale process one should have obviously with the conveying equipment and feeding equipment and controller etcetera. So, the thing is that the first the extraction vessel has to be fed with the material from which that extraction is to be done. Then before the pressurization before bringing that is after it is fed then obviously, there is here in this extraction vessel the material is brought to in contact with the supercritical fluid under required conditions of the pressure and temperature. So, before pressurizing the system is allowed to reach the preset operating parameters and these operating parameters may be experimental try and error methods that is depending upon what are the components one wants to extract. So, it is a set and then the supercritical fluid is cooled in the chiller to ensure liquid feed to the pump. And then after that this uh, chilled carbon dioxide is discharged into the pressure vessel and adjustment of the pressure is done to the desired level. So, simultaneous discharge of co-solvent through the pump at the predetermined flow rate is done in the systems where the co-solvents are used and then the conduction of the extraction operation it may be is allowed either in the dynamic mode or in the combination mode or in the static mode all right in the batch system which may batch system may include one set of the extraction unit whereas the continuous system may have the combination of different set of extraction unit either in parallel or in series. So, finally, after this it is allowed there is a particular time definite time then it is the last step is the isolation of the dissolved solute by precipitation or by adsorption or by any other appropriate method and then followed by release or recovery of the supercritical fluid. So, that is the this is the process operation of the method. The supercritical fluid technology has many advantages like it is a very good green process it results in the replacement of organic solvent with environment friendly and non toxic solvent it reduces the risk of the solvent residue because the, the, the organic solvent most of the material foods which are, that is the solvent residue always remain particularly in the residual cake in the other things that remains a problem so no such type of problem is 
here in this case it is a rapid process it is suitable for the extraction and purification of low volatile component okay even even suitable for thermolabile natural products so both low volatile as well as highly volatile or thermosensitive products etc they can be extracted easily with and even the extracted product that is their quality can be improved complete and easy recovery of solvent from the extract or the refinate both is possible and it is very efficient and the process can be made continuous it has low handling cost selectively extract target compounds and is a versatile set of technology and this is in fact one of the very very emerging technology and novel technology for food processing application for getting that is the value added products from the food materials and this aspects that is the its application in the food processing industry that we will take up in the second part of this lecture thank you